Hello. Hi. Hi. I love you, Prabal Garang. Thank Alfred. you. Mm -hmm. Thank What's you. Happening? Shout out to Casey who styles me. I'm just happy to be here with you two, and I wanted to know a little bit more, Simon, about what your role is at Barney's. I went to Barney's in 1986 and had many roles over the years. I was very lucky to have this incredible job, this incredible company. And um, it evolved over the years. And now I've gone from creative director to creative ambassador at large, which basically means I get to wear a sash <laughs> and do this a lot. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. yeah. He's a dignitary. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see it. <laughs> so. Is it stressful or do you enjoy it? Um, I had a it? fabulous stressful job for decades. <laughs> oh my God, retail, the magic yeah, of retail. Retails. Expanding, opening stores, San Francisco, LA, all over the place. It was a great, dynamic, stressful job. Nothing wrong with a bit of stress. Right. But now I'm a senior whatever I am. Right. And uh, <laughs> um, so I have this fabulous job. Um, you know, I host events for Barneys. It's more of a PR kind of job, but it's not stressful. You've earned it. You've put in that work and now you can just, hey, I need this done. Yeah, grab me this. And But I'm sure when you walk in and you remember when you were coming up and there's those who are coming up now, do you give them advice? Do, or are they too nervous to ask you? Or um, People uh, ask me for advice a lot. Really? And okay. I'm a big fan of retail. You know, like I think retail was fantastic for me. I, I was a window dresser and then I got involved in Barney's and you know, retail gave me a great career. I didn't have two and nothing before I discovered retail. <laughs> so, like, retail gave me a job, pay my medical insurance, somewhere to go. It's fun. Benefits? It's exciting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, um, those things that are not appreciated enough these days. Just right. having a great job that you're excited yes. about. And retail, think about it. It's like theater. You right. go in and everything's changing and people are excited to be there. It's not like working in a like mental hospital right. or a prison. It's a complete right. opposite. Right. So no complaints. I love that. Ever. Gratitude. Gratitude for retail. I love that. And Barney's. And Barney's, of course. So Jonathan, how about for you? When you two first met, were you just like, hey, so can you get me goodies and I'll give you some of my goodies? I'll, like, how does this work? It's not just about free stuff, I know, you know. I know, I know, I know. But like, is that weird to bring up or do you have to act in the beginning like, oh, I just, I admire what you do, but I don't want anything. <laughs> I like, never even, do you think? Never, I've never had such a question in my never life. My I'm so to, curious. I love that that's what you're thinking. Yes. Though. We, I, if Let only me, I had thought of that at the time, it never even crossed my mind <laughs> and I'm not even joking. We just like, not to suggest that we're in any way great people, but when we met, it was just kind of on. There yeah. was no um, like, can you know, I get a discount? Yeah, there's no Is can I get a discount. <laughs> um, but I like how you think. I think that I probably should have been more like that. Yeah. So if I could turn back no, time. No, that's probably why I you're actually blasted. don't like how you think. Yes. I mean, people seem to come to stores and buy things. It's right. about free. Hello? No, yeah. I'm Team Yale. It was a good idea. And if I, as I said, if I could turn back time, <laughs> but I, I think would this get is a lot why, more free stuff. I feel like this is why you guys lasted, though. Because, you know, there's a genuine energy, <laughs> right? And I think that's important when you first meet someone. We're yeah. very cheeky together. <laughs> yeah, and very like, <laughs> very that. So now that you both are just obviously have been busy with your careers, and I know you have, you're on a new show, you're a judge on Making It on NBC. How's that been for you? Getting this role of a judge on NBC's hit show, Making It, it's so fun. I can't tell you. I mean, working with Amy Poehler, so Nick awesome. Offerman, Dana Isom Johnson, she's the trend ambassador for Etsy. She's the other judge. So two ambassadors Fascist. judging. Yeah. Um, it is just a laugh riot, and we just lensed, filmed. We just filmed the second series, which will air in the fall. So what is the premise of it for those who are just hearing about this right now and you want them to watch? Like what, what makes this show special? Well, making it is a crafting competition <laughs> show. And I had to learn to say crafting because people thought oh, it was crafting. What's crafting? It's not crafting, right? Yeah. It's crafting. So it's a, it's a making it. You know, there's so much passion now for, for making stuff yourself. There's a right. big, maker movement in America. And people, that's why the show's a hit. People are putting down their phones mm -hmm. 
and they're making stuff, paper mache, decoupage, macrame, knitting, you name it. Do you make stuff? I love paper mache. I couldn't wait to tell you that. I love paper mache. What's your favorite thing to do? I actually love paper mache too. So and, and my work at Barney's, we were always making things out of paper mache because it's magical. Right. A bit of chicken wire, a bit of newspaper and some paint. And you and can make done. like a giant polar bear in your <laughs> living room. <laughs> That's so much fun though. So you get to do I'm very like lucky to have scored that show. In fact, fun fact, Jonathan Adler. No, <laughs> tell me, tell us. Jonathan Adler auditioned for it too and didn't it, get it. So it came down to the two of us for the final role. And I was like, I was thought to myself, of course I'll get the role. And I was trying to be very magnanimous <laughs> to him and say like, oh darling, I'm sure you're in competition. You know, you might still get it. But in the meantime, I was planning my wardrobe, kind of thinking about some catchphrases. Imagine what hotel I might stay at in LA. <laughs> this is great. And, um, again, I was very magnanimous because I am. One has to be, right. you know, when you know you're obviously going to get the role. Um, and <laughs> so great. Then, you know, I'm not going to say that we weren't occasionally like throwing marbles under each other's feet as we walked. Right. Try to, yeah, you of know, course. we've all seen competition. showgirls. Competition, right? It's competition. But again, I thought it's me, obviously. And then the call came, and it was him, and I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> Um, and now so wait, here we find ourselves. Wait, did you find out together or did you get the call first? Like how did... He didn't believe me. I said, he said... <laughs> <laughs> And then he was just like, you know, two crosses and a zigzag yeah. for a mouth. But I got my own back because Simon had to uh, film in Malibu for 28 days. And I, he, of course, was under strict confidence. So he couldn't tell anybody what he was doing. So, of course, I just told everyone he was in rehab. Right. Was like, He's in Malibu, yes. 28 days. <laughs> You know, can't really talk about it. He's but lost. Be back. Yeah. Just be supportive when he's back. Um, <laughs> Which I think be... added to my kind of mystique. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, you know, it's good to. He went away to Malibu. Yeah, yeah he has Malibu an interesting backstory. Days. You know, times can be a little bit challenging, <laughs> and um, be supportive. You know? Right, be there for him when. Be there for him. That's so much fun. That's sweet, though. You, I think it's great when you see your partner win. I don't know, like for me, my life partner, anytime he's winning, I feel like I've won, you know? Of and it's, course. It's a beautiful feeling. <laughs> I like, know. I hate to be... I think I'm happier obvious. for him, for sure, than when things happen for myself. I don't know why. Do you guys feel we that? We just don't believe you. No? <laughs> I do. I really do. I think, I think I've always been like that, even with like my family. Like, I care if someone talks bad about my family. I don't care if they talk about me. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I was but like, when it's do my not, family. Do not mess with this little one because I will cut you. Is what exactly. I, That's how I, will cut you. I will cut but you. I will cut you. But wasn't it Gore Vidal who said, it's not enough that I succeed, others must fail? I'm just but, kidding. Okay, I was just like, wow. He did say that. <laughs> he did. That's a great quote. Sorry though. to just bring down the energy. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to be all positive. <laughs> this is actually now I'm now I'm learning a little bit about this guy. The, the real him. The real him. What happened in Malibu? No. Mm. 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 How's it been for you, Jonathan, to have such an incredible, iconic lifestyle brand? Uh, it's been. I would say the word would be unexpected. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 25 nice. years ago, I was like unemployed and teaching night classes at a pottery studio in Hell's Kitchen. And my parents were like, dude, like you went to an Ivy League college, we're still paying the bills, oh. what? The actual, yeah. and like, <laughs> and um, they said, you know, you gotta sell a pot or like figure your life out. And I sold a pot and then I sold another pot and kept selling more pots and then never with any plan whatsoever. Like I, I'm happy to say, that I kind of bumbled into it um, gradually, authentically, um, and it's just kind of worked out. And now, it's so funny, people always say, oh, I want to start a business, and yeah. what should the, all the steps be? And my answer is, just don't plan anything, just do it, and if you're good and committed and right. work really hard, hopefully it'll happen. But as I said, I never started with a plan, and I'm very grateful for that. Do you remember what it was that initially gave you your first big break and you're just like yes I can pay my bills my parents are gonna be proud of me I this is real now this is a career do you remember what that was when that happened there have definitely been points. many points along right. the way from getting my first order from Barney's oh that's so, so I got my first order from Barney's about a year before we met and uh, it was a true life-changing moment and we, we actually met on a blind date 
And yes. we kind of, he knew who I was because I was selling my stuff at Barney's. And of course I knew who he was because he was kind of a legendary celeb chant. And when we met, I thought he was going to be Little Miss Fancy Pants. And <laughs> I was at the time very gritty and real Potter, as you can tell. Um, and cut to, he's not Little Miss Fancy Pants. He's actually grittier and realer than I am. Now here we find ourselves. Gritty. Oh, this gritty, is... gritty. So was it love at first sight, or how did this work? We love these stories. Well, he was 28. I was 40. I thought... Two. Just he saying. Was, he was 28. <laughs> I was 42. I thought he's not going to be particularly interested in me. I liked him. He was very interesting, fun. Um, you know, we're both from little towns. Mm -hmm. He's from southern New Jersey. I'm from a town outside of London. So we, we weirdly had a lot in common. And I really liked him, but I just didn't think he would be that into me. And then the intermediary mm -hmm. said, oh, he likes you. And then I kind of allowed myself to realize that, oh, I, I really liked him too. Well, so I think, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. I think men peak at 42. 42 is the peak of men. So I got him. <laughs> right at the peak. Right at the peak. And needless to say, it's all been, it was like here and then it's just been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. But. You know, but he wrote me in at the peak and the rest is her story. <laughs> See, I have a different perspective. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave him my pretty years. Year. And I've yet year. to get a receipt. I've yet to get a receipt. You gave for me the your pretty, pretty years. year. A year. Okay. Yes. And then he got me for a good 14 years as I was reaching my peak at 42 and now it's been a little downhill for me as well. It's okay. It's okay. Well, you know what? Downhill together. Downhill? <laughs> downhill together, we wow. stay together. But you know, I, I think that's sweet though. I love this story. Do a lot of your friends ask you guys for advice because you guys are the ones that are together and solid? Are they well, like, help us? Well, what happens is, Jonathan, you tell me if you disagree. I think we have such a great relationship. We're very fun all the time. We like to watch sports. We don't drink. We have a lot in common, the weird things that we have in common that um, make us very close. And we're always teasing each other and laughing, blah, blah, blah. Great relationship. When we're around other people, we destroy their relationships <laughs> because ours is just so sh astonishing. Right. and. Sure is <laughs> It's literally like there's a trail of bodies of like right. broken relationships. Because right. we're not proud of, but maybe, perhaps we've done a mitzvah by, right. you know, making people realize that, oh, maybe they're not with the right, right one. person. We share the very first summer we met, we shared a beach house with this married couple. Oh, and no. after that, after the summer, they, they divorced. Sad. Sad. But now they're both very happy. Why? Newly, you, happily married. What do you think it is that they see with you two that they don't have in their relationship? Is I mean, I'm sure there's a couple things, but what do you think makes them reevaluate well, you know everything? You, you know when you go to the park and you see a couple of dopey Labrador dogs and they're just right. and they're having fun and batting each other? That's us. <laughs> We're like mm. a couple of dopey... It's Labradors. Cute. Idiotic. Or nuts, actually, and would be never, more accurate. I think what it is is we never talk about anything substantive. Like, if Simon ever came to me and was like, darling, we have to talk, I'd be like, taxi? Right. Like, I would cut him. <laughs> so, luckily, that's never happened, and right. it never will. During the hard times, if any, but I'm sure there are. Yeah, of course. What, what would you say is the best piece of advice you could give to a couple? And, you know, like... There's still hope for them. Let's not assume like they're completely going to end. But if you're just like, okay, it's a rough patch, what would you say is the best piece of advice you could give them to get back on track? You go first. I guess just try to work it out before you go to sleep. Like, mm. don't go to sleep angry. I like that. I'm all about that. Yeah. And I would say to a couple seeking advice, I would say never seek or give advice. Very profound. That's no, profound. that's not very helpful. No, but it's true. I, I would say, but I get that. Play, yeah. have fun together, tease mm. each other, and if you can't do that, then find somebody else who can. <laughs> Easy done. Because I do think you have to have fun. Because yeah. life is already so hard, and you just, when you're at home, you don't want to have to deal with that too. Obvi. Right. But. Obvi. But I feel like so many people stay in relationships because they're just comfortable, mm. and 
Well, they have kids, you know, that's yeah. a real conundrum. If you have kids, you know, then it's a whole other very serious matter. So. Right, so then you do try to make it work and yes. try to get through those rough patches. Yeah, it's tough out here. I don't have kids, so I don't feel that pain, but I can only imagine. Oh my yeah. God. It's... For sure. And I think it's, Russia. you know, yeah. it's also just really gratifying to be in a long-term relationship and just kind of make it work and um, don't expect everything's going to be perfect all the time. Although for Simon, everything is perfect all the time because of moi. Simon. But like, we were having a little tip. <laughs> <laughs> We were having a little minor tiff this morning, so I just picked up the dog chews these little tennis balls, and I just picked up one and threw it under and hit him on the back of the neck. So well, then when we laugh, well, the yeah. thing is, when you're two dudes, you can it can get a little violent, which is not well, the worst thing. Well, throwing a ball is throwing a ball. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think that's one of the great things about being a couple of dudes is that you know the, a towel can be snapped, and right. that can be enough to. Um, Everyone get back on track, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I think with like a man or woman, there's it's a little more charged. Right. Yeah. Can't do that. Right. <laughs> really You're like, that. no, no, don't but do that. But like, there's no also... shortage of snapped towels. She knew. Yeah, throwing a tennis ball and whatever. Yeah. And we can fine. insult each other too. Right. With that. Whereas I think my straight friends have a lot more sensitivity about their interactions between men and women in particular, what you can and can't say. We don't have it. There's no nothing filter. you can't say. No limits. No limits. At all. I think it goes by, he's from New Jersey, from this farm town, southern New Jersey. I think if you're from New Jersey or you're from where I'm from, which is still the equivalent of New Jersey, you can't be pretentious. You can't take yourself too seriously. It's actually a gift. Mm. Yes. So with, being that you both are so creative, have an incredible eye, how, who decides on designing the house and um, you? Well, this is the thing. People always say to us, um, <laughs> people, it's so silly. People are always like, oh, you're both, you know, you're right. both um, design professionals. Like, right. there must be a lot of bickering over where to put the obelisk on the mantle. <laughs> and um, we're so not like that. We don't ever talk about it. Simon recognizes that my job is to make and design spaces. And so he's like, oh, just go for it. He's very... He understands the creative process as I understand his creative process, whether it's writing. Right. Because the funny thing about Simon, and this is an incredible thing, when I first met him 24 years ago, wow, I know, right? Um, you know, he was this Time. he was this legendary window dresser and a visual artist. And then about 15 or 16 years ago, someone said, "Oh, you should write a book." And because he's very obedient, he did. Cut to, he is a brilliant writer. Right. That just came out of nowhere. Um, and so really what he does is write. So, you know, he, do, he has his Barney's job and I his making it thing, but he's really at home, like, pumping out incredible books that are genius. And I say that as somebody who hates to give him a compliment, right. so I really mean it. <laughs> um, and, you know, he understands that the, like, designing our house is my job and his job is to um, write books right. that amuse me. Right. Did you know that you were always a good writer? No, it never occurred to me. Um, you know, I was always living in the visual realm and fashion and retail, and I was very happy with that. And then I did a book about all my windows, and the publisher, Nicholas okay. Calloway, said, oh, write an introduction. And he called me up screaming and said, you're really funny, you should write more. And then from that, I got my column in the New York Observer, and then I got a column at Slate, and I wrote more books. And I had a new book coming out this fall, on drag, the complete story, like history, going back to ancient Ooh. Rome, all the way from ancient Rome to RuPaul, mm -hmm. the history of drag. So how long did the research take? Three years. Yes, he's like a little scholar. What was the most interesting thing you learned? I'm sure there was a bunch, but share something. Um, well, the stuff about just how long drag has been going on, back to Ancient Rome, obviously Shakespeare, you know, right, all those right, right. roles were played by boys and blah, blah, blah. And all, all the way back um, historically and mythology is full of drag. So can then coming right up to date with Violet Tchotchke and Bianca Del Rio and all the stars of RuPaul's Drag Race. So it's like, wow, it's such a thread throughout history. It was a very interesting, fun book to research. It's incredible. His new drag book is amazing. I've been like reading it, looking at it, I'm mesmerized. And the funny thing is, I, I'm a complete 
fanboy. Mm. It's very embarrassing. And I was traveling in Asia recently, and I was kind of, um, you know, sitting there a little bit like I was. There was nothing on TV. Right. Um, and I was like, you know, I'll reread Simon's oeuvre. Right. And I picked up one of his books, and basically I just sat, like, I stayed up all night rereading all of his books and thought, oh my God, what a genius right. I'm so mean and disrespectful to. Oh, this is I, sweet. I doubled down on my um, disrespect. Yeah. Just, I don't want just to Just as a know. reminder, yes. just, you're nothing. You're nothing. You're not great at Less all. Less than nothing. <laughs> well, but, back to the house, you know. If you lived with Marc Jacobs or Virgil Abloh, would you make your own clothes? Never. So I live with... Yeah. So here, you can do the house, honey. That's your... Yeah. That's his canvas. I love that. I think there, it's, the, it's being a fan of one another's work and art and the respect, because I think respect is really important. That's where I think we both really lucked out. Like, right. If I didn't truly love and respect what he does, I would struggle with it. So I think I just got very lucky mm. to find a truly talented, mm. I got very lucky <laughs> yeah, to yeah. find a truly talented dude. Yeah. Well, he, <clears throat> Jonathan gives me a lot of feedback on my writing and he's very blunt, as you can imagine. Right. And he says, this isn't funny enough. The introduction needs some more zingers in here. And the last bit didn't make sense and blah, blah, blah. He's actually a very good editor. And I, won't, I will say, I'm not really a good editor of what he does. Mm -hmm. But he's very good. I rely on him. He reads everything I write pretty much before it goes out. I think, I, I think the respect is real clear here. And I think that's important. That's probably one of the many reasons why your relationship works the way it does. Because it's not, you're not doubting one another, mm. not belittling one another. Just like, yeah, yeah, sure, that sounds great. Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, why are they doing that? <laughs> Thank you two so much for being here today. Had such a great time. Thank, Thank you. you, we loved it. Of course. Thank, Thank you, you, darling. <laughs> <laughs>